Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today I'm gonna show you a fun way to make some backgrounds using cardstock and watercolor markers or spray inks, whatever you have on hand. Uh, it's a great way you can use your kids' uh, Crayola markers or your artist's watercolor markers. You just need regular cardstock, but then you do need to be watercolor markers. So the first thing we're gonna do is take a piece of cardstock, and this is just, um, this is the Michaels Recollection brand, and I'm gonna go ahead and spray it with some spray inks, and I'm just gonna, Tipping my paper so that it can, so I don't spray my entire work surface. You want, you want it pretty colorful. The more ink, the more, um, the more your technique is going to show up. And then I'm just actually going to pick up any of this extra ink right here. All right, we can let this set this aside to dry for a couple minutes. All right, so right there, it's just a just an inky background piece. This is going to look really cool, and I think it's going to have a lot of like. Um, effects a lot of really cool um uses if you're doing like an underwater scene or whatnot and i'll do actually do this one with different shades of blue so that we can get kind of like a underwatery scene and i've got my spectrum aquas my trusty markers here you could do like a starburst pattern um whatever you want i just like stuck my hand in a hot glue gun that i had off camera i just moved it so it wouldn't be in the screen and i'm gonna stick my finger in it And you can see this is like um, this cardstock in particular is oops I think I already used that one is um, is extremely absorbent. You can see how my colors are not blending very well together here. They're kind of um, see they're kind of overlapping and glazing and they're not blending. So that's kind of what you want. You want a paper that's super absorbent. They're just going to grab the color and hold on to it. And you might discover that by accident like I did. Because I was looking, I was trying to blend some colors. And I'm thinking, well, this isn't blending at all. This is kind of the opposite of what I wanted. So you get your colors down however you want. Like on this one, I did kind of like a starburst. I did a circle, then another circle, and another circle. Okay, this is just random. And then you want to take a paintbrush and some water or a water brush, whatever you have. I'll just use this paintbrush here, and it's just plain water. You can see it's not even that clean of water. It's kind of murky water, but you know, clean water is probably better. But look at what happens. You know, you could speckle it on. You get some really cool effects. It almost reminds me of like um, of like a geode. See that like this one right here? You can really see it on the. Uh, you can add more water even if you want to make it more. Um, define, but you get these really cool watermarks, and I this is one of those you know discover it by accident type things. All right, and as this dries, it's going to push the pigment to the outside. See, like right there, how it's like it's just getting pushed around to the outside. So let's set this aside for a minute, and we'll work on the other one that we just sprayed, which is what do we do with that guy right over here? Okay, maybe I'll zoom in just a little bit. You can see the effect a little bit better. There we go. Getting in there close. You can get some really good splashy marks on there. You could even paint it a little bit if you want or like a really big effect. And the more layers of water you add inside the droplets, it'll bleach the paper almost out to white. Now, if you want to do this and all you have is alcohol ink or alcohol markers, um, you can do that. Just use rubbing alcohol as your... Um, as your droppy thing but i wanted to share this with regular markers because um most people have a box of crayolas around a box of crayola markers or they might want to do this technique with their kids and not want their kids breathing in the rubbing alcohol i think rubbing alcohol is pretty safe but you know why why risk it and this is just so easy and it works just as well as like a polished stone kind of kind of technique so i can go in and i can add more water and just watch it push that pigment around and drip and it's almost very like therapeutic just kind of like I was listening to an audiobook and just like dropping water and I was like oh this is just this is a lovely way to spend an afternoon I'm not getting a darn thing done but it's awfully fun to do now um what I think I'll do is I don't know if I want to keep set it or if I just want to pause the camera we can put some more in there why don't we see what happens if we use the heat gun while and we'll do that right while the camera's going got my heat gun right over here it's even plugged in Let's see what happens with the heat gun. Because sometimes, sometimes it forces it too much and you lose some of the effect, and sometimes it, uh, it's great. You know, we'll see. I love the edges that you get when you have the color 
the colors running. Kind of like if you leave like an inkjet print out in the rain, or you're like, you get, you know, you forget you printed something, and then it gets, you know, speckled, or you accidentally spill water, or you, have a, you know, an inkjet print out next to the sink or something, and you forget. I just think it's a really cool texture. It almost looks like barnacles. I think it's just it would be so cool on a on a card with like a mermaid or some other underwater theme. I think I am gonna pause it and let it fully dry and we'll come back and take a look at the final results. And we're back. I don't think it faded that much. You guys will probably tell a little bit better going from like wet to dry. But um, I just want to show you the difference here. This one with just like that kind of one layer of splashes that we put. Now this one, I would go back in and put more drops of water on top of the other drops as they were drying and just kind of pushed out the pigment more. And so we have this one, which was done with the spray inks. This one was also done with the spray inks, but like lighter spray. So you get more of a soft look with this. Um, I was like jellyfish or I don't know. I just think it looks so fun and underwatery. Now I can go back in and add some more drops on top of that and it will even make some more like lighter circles on top of our um, on top of our dried ones. I think it looks really cool when you layer it but you know knowing this you can either use your spray inks or use your markers and get just the effect that you want. And I think this would be a great um, kind of wind down activity for a kid if you've got a kid that's kind of a little I don't know, nerved up or wound up over something and you could just sit them down like, hey, try this and just let them just kind of zen out with this little effect. I think it's a really fun technique. Now look at all the extra interest just from adding a few more drops of water. I think it's so fun. I think that um, it's a great way to make a batch of backgrounds someday when you're not inspired and you can't seem to get anything to go. Like, you know, we all have those days, don't we? We sit down to craft and man, just nothing's happening. Well, hey, here's a wonderful little project for you to try on a day like that. I want to thank you so much for watching. Please give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this tutorial and share it with your friends that would also enjoy it. I do appreciate that. Uh, thanks so much for watching. Until next time, happy crafting.